Pixar is famous for teasing future films with small references and Easter eggs, a tradition hailing all the way back to 1998 with A Bug's Life. Let's take a stroll through animated cinematic history and look at all the times Pixar teased a future film with some sneaky Easter eggs. Makeup, get out of there. We are on in five, four, three. There's more than just a nice snack in this vending machine. When Mo goes to the vending machine in Lightyear while his team watches him, a little shout out to Pixar's next film is also hidden inside. While he's at the machine, inside the glass, you can see a package with the name Wade Water on the package inside. Wade is the name of one of the characters in the upcoming Pixar film, Elemental, and he looks water-based. Surprising? Anyone go for a snack? Looks like Andy from Toy Story isn't the only Lightyear fan in the Pixar universe. While May runs with her friends down the street, if you look closely at Miriam's skateboard, you can see stickers for socks and the Star Command insignia on the bottom of it. It looks like the boy band from Turning Red might have stolen their name from an even more important artist. <gasps> Four town. Yes! Four In Luca, inside Julia's home, there is an album for a band called Four Villaggi, with a star in between the four and Villaggi on the cover. Turning Red fans will recognize this as an ode to Four Town, the boy band May and company obsess over in Turning Red. The star on the cover is also a dead giveaway that this was intentional. Four Town forever. Four Town Four forever. Town forever. Who wouldn't want to go visit Luca and Alberto in 2020? In Seoul, while 22 is joyriding inside Joe's body, they pass by a travel agent's office with a poster for Puerto Rosso. This is the Italian town where all the events in Luca take place. I just hope that 18-year-old Ercole guy is gone. Guess he'd be like 60 now, so hopefully he moved out. Benvenuti a Puerto Rosso! Where can we get our own copy? Dorothea Williams, the star club singer idolized by Joe in Seoul, is so infamous that one of her albums makes it all the way to the world of Onward. One of her albums can be spotted hiding in plain sight at the Lightfoot home amongst their record player and other music. Get on up here, Teach. We ain't got all day. Onward to a clue found in Toy Story 4. The antique mall in Toy Story 4 has tons of Pixar goodies hidden inside. But for our future film teaser, we must travel to the carnival in the film. On the bouncy castle there, you can see a familiar portrait from Onward. The Pegasus design from the side of Barley's van is also drawn on top of the castle. I thought you said you fixed the van. Relax, one of yours is fine. It's all part of the plan. Pixar already knew how important a new character, Duke Kaboom, was going to be in the next Toy Story film. So just to tease audiences a little bit, they snuck the action figure into Jack-Jack's crib in Incredibles 2, something no one would have suspected as important until the new Toy Story film came out. These guys are really organized. Kaboom. Seems the land of the dead is filled with fans of Pixar films. In the Land of the Dead, on one of the walls in an alleyway, we see a skeletal version of the Parr family on a wall, teasing the upcoming Incredibles 2 film. Sort of creepy seeing them all post-life, you know? But that's not all. There's also a bonus reference to Toy Story, since Toy Story 4 was also in production at the time. At the beginning of the film, when Miguel is running through his town, there is a Buzz and Woody pinata hanging up. I don't want to talk about it. Seems everyone loves the set design in Coco. While some of the cars are practicing some driving in Cars 3, Santa Cecilia from Coco makes an appearance on a TV screen to inspire one of the racers. Santa Cecilia, mi pueblo! Win for them! This is not the only Coco reference in the film, however. Ernesto Del Cruz's famous guitar is also snuck into a scene. But how do cars play guitars? We'll leave that question to the philosophers. Oh, really? You're gonna need a magnifying glass and some patience to spot this next tease. In Finding Dory at the end of the truck chase, one of the truck drivers has a band-aid on their finger, and on it is an image of Lightning McQueen from the Cars franchise. Little did viewers know, this was Pixar saying, don't forget about Cars because they're coming back. How true, how true. While we're not looking for Dory, we're actually looking for Hank in this tease. When Arlo is learning to swim in The Good Dinosaur, Hank the octopus from Finding Dory can be seen deep in the water very well hidden. As you know, octopi do. What, the octopus escaped again? Happy to see him enjoying being free for once. 
I hope these are statues and it's not a taxidermy type situation. Some of the dinosaurs from the good dinosaur can be seen during Riley's road trip across California in Inside Out. First, we see a Triceratops who is a dead ringer for Forrest Woodbush. Riley's dad then has a bit of a car accident with what looks like one of the Brontosaurus's tails. They're reshaded from their original looks in the film, but fans would definitely still recognize them. Good idea. Monsters vs. Dinosaurs. Who wins? During the University Scare Games in Monsters University, two characters from the good dinosaur can be found on the ground being cleaned up between rounds. Clearly one is Arlo, the other is a Stegosaurus, but we're not sure if there was ever a major Stegosaurus character in The Good Dinosaur. Maybe it was cut after this point of teasing the film. What are you up to, boy? N nothing. Sorry to all the timeline conspiracy theorists out there. Oh, that's my favorite part! In Brave, Mirida denies being forced to marry by besting her suitors in an archery contest shaming the other clans, and after a heated disagreement with her mother, Eleanor runs away into the forest. Wisps appear, leading her to the hut of an elderly witch. Merida bargains for a spell to change her fate, and the witch gives her an enchanted cape. While Merida visits the witch's hut, a carving of Sully can be found inside there, a tease for the upcoming Monsters University film. So no, it's not actually there to create a time travel magic theory connecting all the Pixar films together. If you spend any time with videos like this, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. Did you know in an alternate universe, Merida from Brave was a car? If you look closely at Ye Left Turn In in London during the race, the Dunbrock family tapestry is seen on the wall, but it's a carified version, with Merida, her father, and mother all turned into cars. You think they'll ever humanize the Cars characters so we can see what they'd look like as people? Oh, you sure you can handle it? Boys just love their cars, don't they? In Toy Story 3, one of Teenage Andy's posters is a Finn McMissile, a character who appears in the sequel to the first Cars film. It's okay if that's the one Pixar film you didn't watch. We've got you covered. Smooth like pudding, huh? The film follows Lightning McQueen and Tow Truck Mater from the first film, who head to Japan and Europe to compete in the World Grand Prix, while Mater accidentally becomes sidetracked with international espionage, and then attempts to uncover a conspiracy led by a mysterious criminal mastermind and his gang, which threatens the lives of all competitors in the World Grand Prix, with the help of British spies Finn McMissile and Holly Shiftwell. Finn's a British spy car who mistakes Tow Mater, one of the main characters, for an American spy and recruits him in the mission to solve the conspiracy to sabotage the World Grand Prix. I think you forgot the insulting part of that insult. That last entry was not the only tease from Toy Story 3, however. That's right, everyone's favorite Pixar film, Newt, was also teased in Toy Story 3. Just kidding. So, if you didn't know, Pixar was in production on a film that never made it to the cinemas called Newt. In March 2014, before being canceled, Newt had been turned over to Pete Docter. Pete, at that point, had already directed Up and Monsters, Inc. Pete said that he'll do it, but he had another idea altogether, which he believed was better. This idea turned out to be the basis of Inside Out, which he then directed for a 2015 release. Pixar then didn't end up continuing with Newt for obvious reasons. Inside Out was amazing. Good job, gentlemen. That could have been a disaster. However, it lives on in this Easter egg on Andy's door as a Newt Crossing sign. R.I.P. Seems Duke Nukem wasn't the only Toy Story villain tease for Pixar. In Up, as Carl takes his house for its first flight, he flies past the little girl's room. Lots of Huggins Bear can be seen next to the bed lying in a corner. I'm Lotso Huggin' Bear, but please call me Lotso. For those who don't know, Lotso Huggin's Bear is a large pink sentient strawberry scented teddy bear who rules Sunnyside Daycare with an iron fist in Toy Story 3 with the aid of his minions, Ken, Big Baby, Stretch, Sparks, Chunk, 
Twitch, the Bookworm, and the Monkey. Ultimately, Lotso's reign of terror ended when Andy's toys arrived, all while serving as the latter group's most hated enemy and Woody's arch nemesis. Holy cow! And you didn't believe him! Hey, you didn't believe him first! So make sure in the future you look very closely to check Pixar films for random toys because that might be the next Toy Story evil toy. Wally not only hoards junk, but tons of future film Easter eggs as well. First, we've got a Carl Fredrickson tease with a cane inspired chair. As you can see by the four tennis ball design on each leg, the chair first shows up while Wally watches an old film, and then Wally later falls down and collides with it. The design is slightly different from the cane, but it's meant as a tease for our favorite old grump. The second tease is a Rex hidden among Wally's items since the crew was working on Toy Story 3. Rex is one of Andy's more anxious toys. Unfortunately, they hadn't invented the dog to human speech caller yet. In Ratatouille, while Remy runs through someone's home, the shadow of a dog can be seen on the wall barking. Keen-eyed viewers will recognize the shadow right away as fan-favorite character Doug, the dog, from Up. A tougher Easter egg to spot is one from Hal from Wally. Hal is Wally's cockroach friend and can be found on the wall of Alfredo's apartment as he walks in. That's not just any fire truck. After Bob and Frozone foil a fire turned bank heist, Red the fire truck can be seen on the street. We don't hear what he has to say, but we're sure it's something about putting out said fire. <gasps> Another treasure trove, literally, of future film teases can be found in Finding Nemo. So you do like it, don't you? No, 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 I do, I do, I do, I really do like it. Finding Nemo follows Marlin, an overprotective father fish whose son, Nemo, goes missing after a dentist turned fish catcher brings him back to his office. Marlin sets off to find his son with the help of Dory, a forgetful but friendly fish. During the film, while Nemo checks out his new prison, a picture of Mr. Incredible, aka Bob Parr, can be found on a comic book a boy is reading in the dentist's office waiting room, long before anything related to The Incredibles' upcoming film was released publicly. This is fine. You can also find a Buzz Lightyear toy in the dentist's waiting room as well. Viewers probably assumed it was just a routine Easter egg for Toy Story, but it was actually a hint of more Toy Story films to come. And finally, while it wasn't a tease for a future film, rather one that already had come out, we're going to mention this one anyway. The palm trees from Monsters, Inc. were featured in the dentist's office as well, or at least the 3D models from the film. Of all the things the animators snuck in from Monsters, Inc., no one would ever guess it was palm trees from such a quick scene in the Monsters, Inc. movie. There was plenty of clowning around going on in Monsters, Inc. As Finding Nemo centers around Marlin and Nemo, two of the last clownfish, Pixar decide to tease at this heavily in Monsters, Inc. First, you can find a clownfish motif inside the Monsters, Inc. sushi restaurant on the wall behind the restaurant owner slash chef octopus monster. Next, when Randall is banished, the place he goes has a clownfish trophy on the wall you can spot as Mike opens the door to it. And the final Nemo tease and most prominent was the model for Nemo, which wasn't even finished being designed by that point in Finding Nemo's production, was a toy Boo hands to Sully at the end of the film. We'd also like to mention Jesse from Toy Story 2 is also one of Boo's toys, but that was a reference to a previous film rather than a tease for a later one at this point, but uh, still cool, right? And finally, where all the teasing began. Finally, I'm a beautiful butterfly! At the end of A Bug's Life, during the outtakes portion, Woody walks into frame as a fake assistant camera person slating for the bugs in the scene. The staff at Pixar loved this little Easter egg so much that they decided to start sneaking in future film characters and other things into each film for the audience to find. While audiences may have thought this was just a fun little thing to sneak in as everyone knew Woody from Toy Story, of course this was also a subtle nod to the upcoming Toy Story 2 sequel, thus cementing the practice in all future Pixar works. And there's lots of different reasons why and how we've, we've done that. Pixar's attention to detail is a defining trait of the studio, and it's the reason audiences can't wait for the next Pixar project to premiere. Which of these was your favorite? Any we missed? Let us know in the comments below. 
If you enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe for more. And thanks for stopping by The Things Animated. I have compassion for every soul. Except you, I don't like you. If there's one thing we can expect from a Pixar movie, it's quite a few Easter eggs. Well, we've gathered plenty of our favorites from Pixar's more recent movies, and we're ready to tell you all about them. Let's get to it. Number 1. Socks and R2-D2 have a lot in common. You probably didn't catch just how much Buzz's cat buddy Socks had in common with R2-D2 from Star Wars. Of course, these two cuties are both robots, but it goes beyond that. Did you happen to notice those little noises Socks was making? Beep -boop, beep -boop, beep -boop, beep -boop, beep -boop. Yeah, that sounds just like R2-D2. Plus, these guys can both plug into computers and hack into the systems and also turn their heads 360 degrees. Coincidence? We think not. Socks, how long were we gone? Yum, 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 yum. Number 2. Did you know that turning red and Luca have a very surprising crossover? <gasps> Four, Four Town! Town. Yes! Four Town! <sighs> the boy band Four Town from Turning Red seems to also be a fan favorite musical group in the Luca universe. Yep, there's a Four Town album on the shelf in Luca. Sorry, too much? <laughs> Never! Number 3. Luca also features a little something special from everyone's favorite robot flick, Wally. We all remember the boot where Wally carries his plant. Well, that sure looks like the same boot that's underneath Alberto's hammock. How would Alberto have gotten his hands on that boot? That's very unclear, but it sure makes it sound like there is, in fact, an overarching Pixar universe. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Number 4. Soul has quite a few Easter eggs in the sky. If you're looking for an up reference in Soul, just look up. The spirit of adventure from Up and the Axiom from Wally are sneakily hidden in the sky. You may have to give the movie a pause to catch them, though. Number 5. Onward has a few very interesting real life games translated from the animated feature. Barley Lightfoot has a bit of an affinity for, well, nerd culture. It seems that Barley is playing a version of the super popular trading card game Magic the Gathering. It also seems that he's playing a version of another famous game, Dungeons and Dragons. Isn't just a board game? It's an historically based role-playing scenario! Number 6. Did you notice the famous faces in Coco? There are a few familiar faces among the cast of Coco, and not just because we've seen Coco about a million times by now. What can we say, sometimes you need a good cry? To spot some familiar faces from other classic Pixar films, we just have to take an extra close look at these pinatas. You can spot Woody and Buzz from Toy Story and even Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc. It'd be pretty tough to break those pinatas, though. We love those guys way too much to hit them with a baseball bat. Number 7. Come on, you'd be a fool to mock Buzz Lightyear. But it seems like it happens in just about every movie he's in. You're mocking me, aren't you? In Lightyear, Buzz Lightyear says one of his more subtle lines from Toy Story 4. You're <laughs> mocking me, aren't you? While this catchphrase certainly isn't as recognizable as, say, to infinity and beyond, it's a nice addition to Buzz's character to keep him saying his common phrases from movie to movie. Number 8. Coco's guitar makes a cameo in Toy Story 4. A little replica of the guitar from Coco can be won at the amusement park in Toy Story 4. And since Coco came out just two years before Toy Story's fourth installment, it's safe to say that that would be quite the coveted prize at that time. When life gets me down, I play my guitar. Number 9. If you have an eagle eye, you may have spotted Lightning McQueen in Coco. A little boy in Coco is wearing shoes that reference Lightning McQueen, specifically the paint job he has in Cars 3. And Cars 3 premiered only five months before Coco, so it makes total sense that little kids would want to wear Cars 3 merch around this time. Number 10. Dorothea Williams appears in more movies than you think. Dorothea Williams is a singer from Soul, but it seems that her soulful voice actually exists throughout the Pixar universe. A record by Soul's Dorothea Williams can be spotted in the Lightfoot family's house in Onward. Who knows what other favorite Pixar characters may enjoy Williams. I used to go bump, bump, and bump, bump. Whoa! Number 11. Soul features its fair share of famous mentors. There are lots of famous mentors in Soul, and even more that can be spotted on the wall of name tags if you look closely. Of course, we get to see 22's mentors, Muhammad Ali, Abraham Lincoln, and Carl Jung. But if you take a minute to look extra closely at the name tags, you'll spot a few more very interesting names. There's super famous historical figures like Martin Luther King Jr. and Joan of Arc, and even some Disney in-joke references like the name tag that reads Joe Grant. Grant is a very famous Disney artist. I'm not even a mentor. Not a mentor? 
Ah, uh, <laughs> reverse psychology. Number 12. Did you spot Donald Duck in Luca? Who doesn't love a classic Disney character cameo? It's one of the all-time most popular genre of Easter eggs. Luca definitely comes through with one with this stuffed Donald Duck toy on the floor. <laughs> Number 13. Turning red features clouds that are very familiar for Pixar fans. Yes, the clouds in this scene look like an exact replica of the clouds on Andy's famous wallpaper in his bedroom in Toy Story. And the clouds on Andy's wallpaper are an exact replica of actual clouds. And, well, this could just go on and on. Number 14. What do Toy Story 4 and The Shining have in common? Toy Story 4 makes quite a few references to The Shining, and if you're wondering, the answer is yes, we're just as surprised by this as you are. Toy Story 4 has multiple references to The Shining, ranging from that very familiar music to the house number being 237, just like that hotel room in the Kubrick classic. Why the nods to one of the most famous horror films in a kid-friendly movie? Uh, we're not sure, but we are fairly certain that these sneaky moments went over many kids' heads. Number 15. Pizza Rat has a cameo in Seoul. We all remember Pizza Rat, and the beloved carb-loving rodent has a pleasantly surprising cameo in Seoul. When Joe is in a cat's body, he runs into the famous Pizza Rat. Or at least a rat with a slice of pizza. Of course, one cannot simply be a rat with a slice of pizza without reminding everyone of the meme that united the internet and reminded us all that a love of bread and cheese can bring even the most unlikely species together in harmony. Number 16. Did you catch the sword in the stone in a cafe in Onward? Yes, Onward features a storefront called the Sword in the Scone. And yes, we absolutely love this name for a little bakery. We also love a Disney Easter egg, and this is a pretty obvious nod to Disney's The Sword in the Stone. Number 17. It's time for dogs playing poker, the up version. <laughs> they're dogs, and they're playing poker! Dogs Playing Poker is probably one of the most famous paintings ever, and we're sure it's made its fair share of appearances in movies throughout the years. Instead of an exact recreation of the artwork, this one features the dogs from up around the poker table. Okay, but is this version of the painting actually on sale anywhere? If not, can it be? It would look just perfect right over real-life versions of Carl and Ellie's chairs. Number 18. We think there's a pretty interesting nod to Brave in Seoul. It appears that Merida's soul just may be in Seoul. Is it a coincidence that this soul is an amazing archer? Or do we think it's supposed to belong to Pixar's favorite archery-loving princess? So, did you notice all of these details? What are your favorite, most surprising Easter eggs in Pixar movies? What about me? Can't mess with perfection! We all know that Pixar knows how to plan Easter eggs in its movies better than anyone, but the sheer amount of references in the Cars movies is enough to blow your mind. So buckle up, Cars fans, this is gonna be one bumpy egg hunt. Number 1. The upcoming Disney Plus series Cars on the Road is stirring up plenty of excitement. And while we only have one trailer to go on so far, it's clear that the show is going to pay homage to Mad Max Fury Road. From the car designs to that speaker situation, Mad Max fans are sure to have plenty to notice. This is not what I expected. Number 2. The famous Pixar ball appears in many of Pixar's films, but you may recognize it best from Toy Story. In Cars, the Pixar ball is a bit more subtle. It appears in Sarge's neon sign when it lights up. It's even better than I pictured it. Number 3. You can spot Monsters, Inc.'s very own Mike and Sully watching in the background. Well, vehicle versions of Mike and Sully, that is. I'm telling you, Big Daddy, you're going to be seeing this face on TV a lot more often. Yeah. Number 4. And speaking of monster trucks, er, monster cars, there's another Monsters, Inc. monster in car form in the OG Cars movie. That looks just like a George Sanderson car. I love working with that big guy. Keep the doors coming, Charlie. I'm on a roll today. Number 5. In Cars 2, you may have spotted the Dunbrock family tapestry in the background. This is the family from Brave, but carified for the Cars universe, of course. Very good. Number 6. In Cars 3, one car makes an ever so subtle reference to Pixar's Coco. He mentions that his home is Santa Cecilia, and this is where Coco was set. Coco came out in November of 2017, and Cars premiered in June of that year. So it's really no surprise that Pixar wanted to pay homage to its newest movie in Cars 3. Santa Cecilia, mi pueblo! Number 7. That's probably why Cars 3 had another Coco moment. Behind Sweet Tea and her band, you can see the guitar from Coco on the wall. When life gets me down, I play my guitar. 
Number 8. Also in the third Cars movie, there's a reference to another famous vehicle on four wheels. This time it's Cinderella's carriage, and you can spot a small replica of it sitting on the shelf. It would be so cute if it turned into an even smaller pumpkin. A pumpkin? But a, a, a pumpkin? Mm -hmm. Number 9. In Cars 2, there's a restaurant in Paris called Gastos. This is a play on the Gusto's restaurant from Ratatouille, but it's now a car pun. Gas. Toes. Huh? What? How could he change it? Number 10. One of the cars in Cars 3 is sponsored by Triple Tint Gum. This isn't just any old gum, it's actually the gum brand from Inside Out. Careful, don't get the song stuck in your head like Riley did. Uh, the song from the gum commercial! Number 11. Bing Bong's wagon from Inside Out is at both the first and second race in the first Cars movie. Number 12. The Pizza Planet truck appears in almost all Pixar movies and is actually a character in the Cars universe. Number 13. Dynaco Gas is a pretty big part of Cars, as Lightning McQueen is literally chasing after its sponsorship. But Dynaco Gas is actually a Toy Story reference, too. This is the gas station where Buzz and Woody famously got stranded. Buzz Lightyear mission log. The local sheriff and I seem to be at a huge refueling station of some sort. Number 14. Lightyear tires are, of course, a cheeky play on Goodyear tires. This time, though, it's a Buzz Lightyear reference. You're <laughs> mocking me, aren't you? Number 15. The Buzz Lightyear references on Lightning's tires actually go even deeper, but you have to look very closely. You can see that Sector 4 Gamma Quadrant is printed on the tire. That's a reference to where Buzz Lightyear says he is stationed. I'm stationed up in the Gamma Quadrant of Sector 4. Number 16. The Nice Butte bumper sticker is more than just a cheeky joke. It's another Toy Story reference. Buzz Lightyear gets this bumper sticker stuck to him in Toy Story 2. Number 17. Miss Fritter has a street sign on the side of her that says Cutting Boulevard. This same sign was in Andy's room in Toy Story 3. It also just so happens to be Pixar's old address. Number 18. Lightning McQueen's number is 95, and we see this number many times over the course of the films. This is Lightning's number because 1995 was the year that Pixar's first full-length movie premiered, which was none other than Toy Story. To infinity and beyond! Number 19. Another car's number is 86, which is, unsurprisingly, another nod to Pixar's history. Pixar was founded in 1986. Number 20. Did you spot this Apple-branded race car? Apple is very significant to Pixar because Steve Jobs actually used to be Pixar's CEO. And this car has the number 84 because that's when Apple started selling their first computers. Number 21. In Cars 2, InsuraCare offers car life insurance. InsuraCare just so happens to be the company where Bob works in The Incredibles. It really is a small world after all, isn't it? Company is like an enormous clock. Is like an enormous clock. Number 22. Did you spot the even bigger The Incredibles Easter egg in Cars 2? The Incredimobiles is playing at the Radiator Springs Drive-In Movie Theater. Honestly, we'd pay to see that movie. <laughs> Boy, this was the best day ever! Number 23. The theater also plays Toy Car Story. We actually get to see a clip of this car version of Toy Story, and we can confirm we'd pay to see this one too. Number 24. You may have to pause to see this moment in the original Cars. The sides of the trucks at the rest stop reference Toy Story, The Incredibles, Monsters, Inc., and Finding Nemo. Number 25. Miss Fritter looks a little familiar, and we're not getting the best feeling about it. She's definitely modeled after Maleficent. Just check out those horns. Well, well. <laughs> Number 26. There's nothing the Cars universe loves quite as much as a car pun. And if this video shows you anything, it'll probably be that they're very good at coming up with them. In the Cozy Cone Motel right behind Sally, you can see a framed picture of Stonehenge, but this time it's made with traffic cones, so it's Conehenge. Number 27. These two race car groupies are named Mia and Tia. Where did they get those names? They're made to look like Mazda Miatas. Get it? Mia Tia? Number 28. Even the sky in the Cars universe is on theme. You can see clouds in the shape of tire tracks in this scene. Number 29. The Cars universe simply can't resist letting other anthropomorphized vehicles make their way into the movies. Studio Ghibli fans probably noticed that Cat Bus from My Neighbor Totoro appears in the short Tokyo Mater. Number 30. If you think you're seeing things when you see A113 show up frequently, you're seeing correctly. 
This is the classroom number for students studying animation at California Institute of the Arts. These students often end up working for Pixar, and as a result, this number often makes its way into Pixar films as a nod to the animator's alma mater. Cars is, of course, no exception. You can spot it most obviously on the train's face when Lightning is looking for Mac. Mac? I ain't no Mac! I'm a Peterbilt for dang sake! Number 31. Since Cars pays homage to Route 66, the crew took a trip before making the movie to gain inspiration and knowledge about the film's setting. The author of the book Route 66 The Mother Road was the Pixar crew's tour guide on their Route 66 research trip. Sally says The Mother Road in reference to this when Lightning McQueen is in court. The glorious jewel strung on the necklace of Route 66. The Mother Road! Number 32. The crew probably gained more inspiration on their trip than they even anticipated. Mater is actually named after a real man they met on their trip. M Mater? Yeah, like Tom Mater. Number 33. Daryl Waltrip is a real motorsports broadcaster. He voices the car broadcaster who's aptly named Daryl Cartrip. If you go to a track, you'll, you'll get in right. one you'll every right. darn time. Number 34. Car number 8 is voiced by famous race car driver Dale Earnhardt Jr. And in true Pixar fashion, number 8 just so happens to be Earnhardt Jr.'s number. Number 35. Car number 11 is another race car who's modeled after a real live race car driver, Mario Andretti. It's a beautiful day for a race, isn't it? Absolutely, Mr. Andretti. Number 36. Number 43 is another car with a similar background. Number 43 is Richard Petty and is blue like his real car. He also crashed in real life like his car counterpart. Oh no! Number 37. These cars are named Tom and Ray, and they're also known as Click and Clack. These are two real people from a real show about cars, Car Talk and they use their real catchphrase, Don't drive like my brother! Oh yeah, don't drive like my brother! Number 38. Luigi loves Ferraris, and if you weren't sure how much, he's sort of got a car tattoo dedicated to them. Luigi's license plate is actually the GPS location of the Ferrari manufacturing plant. A pit stop. Pit stop. Number 39. Sarge's license plate has an interesting message too. His plate reads 41WW2, meaning that he fought in World War II in 1941. The 60s weren't good to you, were they? Number 40. Even Lightning McQueen's name has a special meaning beyond just the fact that he's lightning fast. He's named after the late Pixar creator Glenn McQueen. Number 41. Lightning McQueen gets white wall tires from Luigi and Guido. You may remember these tires from somewhere else. They're the tires that Carl and Ellie's car had in Up. All right, Luigi, give me the best set of black walls you've got. Number 42. B&L, also known as By and Large, is a corporation from Wally. You can see that that company is sponsoring one of the tracks in Cars 3. Number 43. It's pretty clear that the Piston Cup takes place in Emeryville based on that City of Emeryville sign. Emeryville, California just so happens to be where Pixar Studios is located. Number 44. Because we know the Piston Cup is taking place in Emeryville, it makes a whole lot of sense that you can actually catch a glimpse of Pixar Studios right before the race. The jets fly overhead and you can spot Pixar Studios if you look carefully. Number 45. Larry the Cable Guy voices Mater, and Mater says one of Larry the Cable Guy's famous catchphrases. I don't care who you are, that's funny right there. Number 46. George Carlin voices Fillmore, and Fillmore's license plate is actually George Carlin's birthday. George Carlin had a classic stand-up comedy bit called the Hippy Dippy Weatherman, and the voice he used for this routine sounds a whole lot like Fillmore's voice. Let's take a look at the national weather map. Number 47. If you don't know John Ratzenberger's name, you definitely know his voice. When it comes to the box office, John Ratzenberger is actually one of the most successful actors in history. How did he accomplish that, you ask? Well, Ratzenberger has voiced a character in every single Pixar movie from Toy Story in 1995 until Soul in 2020. Ratzenberger is the voice of Mac in the Cars films, and they poke a lot of fun at Ratzenberger's long list of Pixar acting credits during Cars' end credit sequence. Whoever does the voice of that piggy truck, I'm telling you, he's one great actor. Number 48. These kissing cars are named John and Nancy. They're named after ex-chief creative officer at Pixar John Lasseter and his wife Nancy. Number 49. Blink and you'll miss these characters from a famous Pixar short in the original Cars movie. The birds from Pixar's short For the Birds can be spotted sitting on a wire, as they are known to do. Number 50. 
Amidst all those campers in the first race in the first Cars movie, there's a very subtle Pixar reference that's tough to catch. Boundin is a Pixar short that premiered back in 2003. Its main character is a jackalope, and that jackalope is actually painted on the back of one of these campers. Sometimes you're up, and sometimes you're down. Number 51. Finn McMissile is a new character who's introduced in Cars 2, and there's plenty to unpack when it comes to this guy. Unlike most of the other characters in Cars, the shape of Finn McMissile's body isn't based on one real car. Instead, it's actually based on a mix of several different famous sports cars from the 1960s. Most notably, Finn McMissile is partially based on an Aston Martin DB5, which is none other than James Bond's car. Number 52. You've probably noticed that Lightning McQueen has a tendency to stick his tongue out pretty often. All along, you've probably thought this was just a weird quirk, but it's actually a lot more than that. Lightning McQueen's tongue sticking out is actually modeled after basketball star Michael Jordan. Whenever Michael Jordan was doing something really impressive on the court, you'd see his tongue sticking out. And it looks like Lightning McQueen has the same trademark. <laughs> Number 53. Have you ever wondered why the car's eyes in cars are in the windshield rather than the headlights? Which feels like a natural place for eyes on a car. Well, there's actually a reason behind this, too. Anthropomorphized cars in cartoons tend to have their eyes where the headlights are. But Susie the Little Blue Coupe was an exception. This old Disney cartoon just so happened to be one of John Lasseter's favorite cartoons, and John Lasseter was the person who decided that the cars in cars would have windshield eyes instead of headlight eyes. So we think it's pretty clear where the inspiration for that choice came from. Number 54. There's more to Cadillac range than meets the eye. There's a rock formation in Radiator Springs that looks like the back of a Cadillac and is referred to as Cadillac Range. That's because it's a town all about cars, right? Well, actually, it's based on a real place called Cadillac Ranch in Texas. Here, there's a line of Cadillacs that are buried face down, and this is an iconic art installation along Route 66. Number 55. Another famous fixture along Route 66 is the Wigwam Motels. You can find these motels in Arizona and California, and they look a whole lot like the Cozy Cone Motel. Coincidence? We think not. There's no way you spotted all those Easter eggs, right? What did you notice that we didn't include? We want to hear about any other Easter eggs you caught in the comments. Honey! What? Where is my s What does The Incredibles have in common with Breaking Bad? More than you might think. Coincidence? I think not! We've got this and tons more Easter eggs in the Incredibles movies. Let's get into it. Number 1. Cars fans probably spotted some of their favorite characters in the Incredibles. Doc Hudson makes an appearance, and we're pretty sure old Red does here as well. This is a pretty sneaky one since Cars didn't even premiere until two years after the Incredibles came out. Number 2. One cannot simply put Andes in a Pixar movie without reminding us of Toy Story. The Andes sign is a reference to none other than Andy from the Toy Story franchise, but that's far from the only ties to be found between the Toy Story and the Incredibles franchises. Number 3. This airplane is a Toy Story crossover too. You can spot the airplane from Toy Story in the nursery. Number 4. There's another Toy Story reference hidden in the Sugar Bomb cereal. Yes, the marshmallows in this cereal are shaped like Pizza Planet rockets. And if you're thinking that simply can't be the only Pizza Planet appearance we see in this franchise, well, congratulations. You're thinking like a true Pixar fan. Number 5. The Pizza Planet truck is always hiding somewhere. The famous truck that delivers food from everyone's favorite intergalactic pizza joint first drove into the world of Pixar and Toy Story, and it hasn't left since. This truck appears in every Pixar movie in some way, even in movies where it doesn't quite belong for one reason or another. Yet the Pizza Planet truck, now famously, didn't appear in The Incredibles. Did the creators forget to put it in? Did they just want us looking extra closely to try to find it? We have no idea, but luckily they remedied the problem of interplanetary proportions and made sure it was included in The Incredibles too. Elastigirl gets the Pizza Planet delivery guy arrested, and you can spot the truck in this scene. Thank goodness, it just wasn't right having a Pixar movie without it. Number 6. Disney loves a good hidden Mickey, and this one is… rather hypnotizing. Most Disney movies sneak the shape of Mickey Mouse somewhere into the movie. In the case of The Incredibles 2, we get this hypnosis wheel that has a pretty distinct head and ears, just like the world's most famous mouse. Number 7. This Die Hard reference is pretty subtle. 
Lucius is played by Samuel L. Jackson, who also has a role in Die Hard with a Vengeance. In this scene, Lucius starts to get some water at a rather inopportune moment. Samuel L. Jackson's character in Die Hard with a Vengeance, Zeus Carver, does something very similar. Just this time, he answers a phone. Pretty sneaky little nod to a rather unexpected movie. Number 8. Rick's Tiki Mug sure does look familiar. Ah uh, yes, it's modeled after the Tiki in the dentist's aquarium in Finding Nemo. Number 9. A113 shows up a handful of times in the Incredibles franchise, of course. For those who haven't heard of this famous Easter egg, A113 is a classroom number at the California Institute of the Arts where many character animation students pass through on their way to becoming successful animators. Since so many Pixar greats have honed their craft in the A113 classroom, it's become a running joke that this number pops up in various places in Pixar movies. In The Incredibles, Mirage mentions room A113. D-Wing, room A113. Two o'clock. Later, when Mrs. Incredible is searching for Mr. Incredible, she finds him on level A1, cell block 13. And in The Incredibles 2, here it is on this dumpster. Number 10. Frank and Ollie make an appearance. That's Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston. These two are classic Disney animators who worked for Disney all the way back on Snow White, and they also worked on The Iron Giant. Not only do these characters look just like them, but they provide their voices as well. That's old school. Yeah? <laughs> no school like the old school. Number 11. India Golf Niner Niner is more than just a code. Brad Bird wrote and directed The Incredibles. His major directorial debut was a not-so-little movie called The Iron Giant. Elastigirl says India Golf Niner Niner many times, and this code is actually also code for Iron Giant. This is India Golf Niner Niner requesting vectors to the initial. Over. How, you ask? Well, India Golf has the same initials as Iron Giant, and Niner Niner stands for 1999, which is when The Iron Giant premiered. Number 12. This headline actually has a lot of history behind it. The joking headline, Catastrophe Seen as Crisis Looms, comes from The Iron Giant. But in The Iron Giant, this was actually an Easter egg for Lady and the Tramp. Number 13. That's one incredible Pez dispenser. In one shot, you can see a Pez dispenser that's modeled after Mr. Incredible himself. Number 14. It's really no surprise that The Incredibles had some incredible guests at their wedding. Plenty of superheroes must run in the same circles. The superheroes who we saw passing away as a result of their capes, we also see attending Mr. and Mrs. Incredibles' wedding. We're just grateful that capes are no longer required attire for superheroes after those incidents. Number 15. Kristoff Overalls may not be a real overalls company, but it is based on a real person. This billboard is a nod to Anthony Kristoff, The Incredibles' environment art director. Number 16. 1960s cartoon Johnny Quest actually makes multiple appearances in The Incredibles 2. Dash watches the series on TV, and if you pay extra close attention during some chase scenes, there are multiple Quest Towers buildings that can be spotted. Number 17. Right across from one of the Quest buildings, you can see Grindle Department Store. This fictional store is a nod to Nicole Grindle, one of the film's producers. Number 18. Godzilla exists in The Incredibles universe. Dash puts a version of Godzilla on TV in The Incredibles 2. Number 19. Are those Sully's ducks? It appears so. The ducks that get stuck to Sully's tail in Monster Zinc look just like these ones under the couch in The Incredibles 2. Number 20. We think that's the outer limits on TV. Blink and you'll definitely miss it, but when Bob is channel surfing, he flips by the opening of the outer limits. Number 21. This may look like any other Chinese food box, but it's way more than that. This same box also appears in A Bug's Life, Monster Zinc, and Inside Out. Number 22. In this scene in The Incredibles 2, the family is across from 1200 Park Avenue. This address appears on a boat in Finding Dory, but that is actually an Easter egg as well. This happens to be the address of Pixar Animation Studios, and this address makes another appearance on the DevTech business card. Oh, and the end of the phone number on the card is 113. So, well, you get the idea. Sheesh, we can barely keep up. Number 23. If you think the DevTech business card is a treasure trove of Easter eggs, wait till you see all the special street names. Here, Mr. Incredible's GPS shows streets that are all around Pixar Animation Studios. Number 24. And West Cutting Boulevard appears in the background of this scene. That is Pixar's old address. Number 25. So what about this Hullif ice truck? Well, Sirrit Hullif is a production coordinator at Pixar, and who knows, maybe she likes the cold? Is anything in these movies accidental? We don't think so. Number 26. At least we're certain that the Luxo Deli is no accident. This is a nod to the Pixar short Luxo Jr., which also gave us the famous Luxo Ball, which has appeared in many, many Pixar films. Number 27. And The Incredibles franchise is no exception. We see the Luxo Ball quite a few times here, too. 
It appears in the short Jack-Jack attack. It also appears on these hubcaps in The Incredibles 2, as well as on Jack-Jack's crib. Number 28. This one's a tad bit sneakier, but did you catch that International Bowling Co. logo? Yep, it has Pixar bowling balls on it. We really hope someone out there actually has a Pixar bowling ball. Number 29. The Underminer's voice almost certainly sounds familiar. Pixar legend John Ratzenberger plays the Underminer in both Incredibles films. He played characters in every Pixar film that came before The Incredibles, including Toy Story, A Bug's Life, Monsters, Inc., and Finding Nemo. Since then, he's also played roles in the Cars series, Ratatouille, Wally, -E, Up, Brave, Inside Out, The Good Dinosaur, Finding Dory, Coco, and Onward. How does this guy have any free time? Number 30. This building is called Valiant Office Supplies, and this made-up business is a reference to the Disney movie Valiant. Number 31. Did you wonder what the movie playing at the movie theater Dementia 113 is? Well, it references the movie Dementia 13, but it has an extra one. That paired with the way the title is positioned on this sign gives us yet another A113 reference. Did you catch all those Easter eggs? Did you notice any that we didn't include? And there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. The star traveling hero Buzz Lightyear has come a long way since Toy Story, and Lightyear makes sure to fit in tons of references to the character's legacy. We noticed and we want to tell you about them. So strap in for details you missed in Lightyear. Also, spoilers ahead, but like, duh. You're <laughs> mocking me, aren't you? It always works. Buzz blows into Ivan, his autopilot companion, much like you would blow into an old Nintendo 64 cartridge before putting it into the console. What's more important for any hero than a good wardrobe? Every time Buzz travels through space and arrives at a new time period, he's in a different colored suit. You always gotta read the label. On Sox's original box, the initials PCR can be made out, spelling out personal companion robot, which he is. Go figure. Hello, Buzz. Ah! Mid-credit because this movie has three post-movie scenes, if you didn't know. In the mid-credit scene, Commander Burnside is sitting in his office. On the shelves are the iconic Toy Story aliens and the Wally -E robot Mo. Every Pixar film has gotta have it. As Buzz is driving to get away from the soldiers, the Pizza Planet truck is seen on the left side. We had to shine some light on this cameo. The famous Luxo Jr. lamp appears as a constellation in the film when Buzz flies into space. To new beginnings, the ship the crew ends the film on is the same ship from the OG Toy Story film that Buzz lands on Andy's bed in. That's good marketing. My ship has crash landed here by mistake. And now for the final dish. Inside the vending machines in the film are castle cakes, which observant watchers will recognize from the film onward. That's not possible. It is. Everyone loves dinosaurs. Inside Alicia's quarters, there is a toy dinosaur on the table, an obvious nod to infamous Toy Story character, Rex. Ah, someone's coming! Now's the time for some robo-themed details. After things go wrong during his first hyperspeed test, Buzz tries to get his ship back to the ground. Unfortunately, Ivan is no help at all. Buzz shouts, open the fuel door, Ivan. The computer responds, I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. A clear parody of Hal's cold, I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. After Dave's request, Open the pod bay doors, Hal. From 2001, A Space Odyssey. Speaking of Robo Bros, Sox, Buzz's robotic cat comrade, is able to hack into computer systems using his tail. When he locks in, his head spins around in full 360 degree motions, and he starts saying, Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. A pretty clear reference to R2-D2's own habits in Star Wars and his rotating head. I didn't know Buzz visited Mandalore. On the base there is a jetpack sitting to the side that looks like the ones the Mandalorians use. Most famously Boba Fett from Star Wars Return of the Jedi. You know nothing, Buzz Lightyear. Midway through Lightyear, Buzz and the gang infiltrate an old mining station to get a computer part for their ship. However, they accidentally trip the outpost security system, trapping themselves in bright orange capture cones. Sound familiar? It should to Toy Story 2 fans, which has a street crossing scene where Buzz, Rex, Ham, and the rest of the crew hide under traffic cones in order to cross a busy road must be from carrying so many franchises on his back. Buzz Lightyear cracks his neck while exiting deep sleep, just like Lucas Lee in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Both of these roles star Chris Evans. To infinity and beyond. <laughs> I guess he's a director, writer, actor, triple threat for a reason. There seems to be a thorough line for Disney films where characters are trying to get off the planet they are on. I have to get off this planet. 
as Taika Waititi notices in this interview. Well, they all wanted to get off the planet. Once you hear about Crystallic Fusion, you don't forget about Crystallic Fusion. It's a big part of this film, and it's been a part of Buzz's story since the very beginning in Toy Story when he first mentions it. Do people still use fossil fuels, or have you discovered Crystallic Fusion? I'm more of a Sector 2 person myself. At the end of Lightyear, Buzz's new team is assigned to head to the Gamma Quadrant of Sector 4 for some investigating. That destination may ring familiar for Toy Story fans. I'm stationed up in the Gamma Quadrant of Sector 4. The location is mentioned again in Toy Story 2, as it's the setting of Buzz's battle with Zerk. It's sort of his deal. Buzz's resistance to teamwork, and specifically to working with anyone he deems unqualified, is pretty accurate to his portrayal in the first Toy Story. In both films, he goes from a moody loner to a happy member of a larger group. Buzz's general hesitation at normal social interaction and relationship building is a thorough line from his character in Toy Story, as the character is always more focused on the mission at hand. Ready, Captain Lightyear? Ready as I'll ever be. Luke, I am your... you. During the film, Zerg is revealed to be an older version of Buzz Lightyear. In Avengers Endgame, Captain America appears as an old man after time traveling himself. Is Lightyear just an alternate Captain America film? There's a lot of crossover. Maybe Chris Evans demanded it? It's a 90s kid thing. The digital readouts in Lightyear have the same blocky overlays of 90s computer screens, which makes sense for a movie that's supposed to have been released in 1995 when Andy first saw it. The writer certainly committed to the mid-1990s inspired tech in multiple ways, as per our other entry with the cartridge blowing and all. All light, all light, all light, year. Interstellar spoilers ahead. Bet you didn't know Lightyear was going to reference Interstellar and Matthew McConaughey, did ya? Dealing with time dilation is not a strictly interstellar thing, but it's hard not to connect the fallout that happens with the characters from interstellar time traveling and what happens to Buzz. Buzz also continues to do it over and over despite discovering all the years he's missing, which I don't think Matthew McConaughey's character would have done the same. They might be yellow, but they ain't C-3PO. Zerg's robot army in Lightyear are a little more advanced and intimidating than the ones seen in Toy Story 2, but they still have the same basic yellow design. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. While not completely the same, observant fans of Toy Story might notice Buzz's fight in Lightyear with Zerg is similar to the one from Toy Story 2. The shot where Buzz jumps and front flips over Zerg, then quickly turns to fire a laser back, is taken right out of the Buzz Lightyear video game Rex plays at the beginning of Toy Story 2. Luckily, Buzz has better luck than Rex in this scenario. That's one nice looking ship. Hardcore Buzz Lightyear fans will notice Zerg's Dreadnought harkens back to the franchise's past, although it does look a good deal different this time around. It first appeared in Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, an animated series produced by Walt Disney Television Animation and Pixar Animation Studios. If you kick butt in space, you gotta have an awesome catchphrase, and Buzz certainly has a few more than just To infinity and beyond! For example, I'm Buzz Lightyear, I'm always sure. Buzz states first in Toy Story 2 and while trying to save a spaceship in Lightyear. You sure? I'm Buzz Lightyear, I'm always sure. At the very beginning of Lightyear, when Buzz and Alicia are exploring the alien planet, Buzz records one of his iconic mission logs, commenting on the landscape. Terrain seems a bit unstable. Of course, this is also his comment when walking around on Andy's bed in the original Toy Story. Terrain seems a bit unstable. Finally, Buzz says, Not today, Zerg! A reference to the popular phrase, Not today, Zerg! Those moves aren't just to sell some toys. At multiple points throughout the film, Buzz shows off his famous karate chop action from his toy commercials. As well, in the third act of the film, Buzz improvises by strapping a smaller standalone laser blaster to his wrist for easy use. Just like the one he sports in Toy Story. The weapon comes in particularly handy in his battle with Zerg. Chris Evans' characters just love to hang around with his close friend's kids. Buzz befriends Izzy Hawthorne, Alicia's granddaughter, and Captain America, um, befriends Peggy's niece, Sharon. Lightyear isn't actually the first time Buzz has gotten a spin-off that explores his sci-fi lore and backstory. The direct-to-video movie Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, The Adventure Begins, 
bear some striking similarities to Lightyear. First, both movies involve Buzz learning to accept help from a ragtag group of unlikely heroes who want to be space rangers. You know how I feel about rookies. In the older film, the team consists of a robot named XR, a former Star Command janitor named Booster, and recent recruit and princess Miranova. Like in Lightyear, Buzz repeatedly expresses his distaste for rookies. Sorry, but you don't have the field experience to take on such a dicey assignment, princess. But he eventually comes to love this new group, and together they stop Zerg's evil plan. Sounds familiar, right? More Chris Evans-based details. Captain America travels through time multiple, well, times, in various Marvel films, while Buzz Lightyear does the same in order to test the hyperspace fuel. An epic suit deserves an epic reveal. Both Lightyear and Captain America have their epic suit reveals and are almost the same scene shot for shot. Another space-based story, another bluish power source. The Tesseract from the MCU and Hyperspeed Crystal from Lightyear, CU, are very similar, and both serve as MacGuffins for our various heroes. Which is not a form of muffin, by the way. That just means they both serve as a plot-related thing that the characters look for to push the action forward. You're welcome. Lightyear is a big movie, so it had plenty of room for fun details. Any ones you noticed that we didn't mention? Let us know below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and thanks for stopping by The Things Animated.